Hi everyone, welcome back to our podcast. Today we're going to talk about a very tragic topic, which is genocide. With the help of my partners, Deborah and Sarah, we're going to illustrate to you the tragic consequences of genocide. Genocide happens all over the world, but today specifically we're going to be talking about the Katumba genocide that happened 16 years ago in Burundi. Oh, that's interesting. So what's the story behind the Katumba genocide? That's what I was wondering. So can you tell us more about the Katumba genocide? Thank you so much for your question. And well, you see, in order for me to answer your questions, I'm going to tell you about my own story. I will never forget the 13th of August, 2004. That day, the FNL, the Burundian Liberation Movement, came into our camps and started firing shot after shot. I was afraid. I looked up at my papa, and that was the second time I had ever truly seen fear in his eyes. The first time was when the Congolese soldiers were looking for us in order to drag us back home. Home where we only experienced hatred and discrimination. I was suddenly brought back to reality by a shot that was fired by one of the attackers. I was so afraid that my entire body was trembling and tears were running down my face. I wiped away my tears and instinctively took my papa's hand. Papa looked at me and told me to run with him as fast as I could. At first, people were frozen in fear, and it took a while for them to understand what was going on. Suddenly, the attackers stopped firing shots and started brutally setting people on fire. I realized then that my papa and I were two of the many hundreds of people that were trying to find safety and escape the massacre. I could hear the agonized screams of people who were being burned alive, and the smoke in the air started to burn my eyes. As I was running in the chaos, I lost my grip on my papa's hand, and I remember shouting for help, but no one would listen to my small cries. People were screaming. I saw blood flowing from one camp like a river. I saw dead bodies being thrown around like trash. I knew in that moment that I truly witnessed mankind in its most savage and cruel form. Now, Deborah, tell me how you'd feel if you got to actually witness your tribe, your father, your mother, and even your little brother being killed right in front of you. How would you feel that? It's just so tragic and inhuman, isn't it? You are right, and I feel like if I was in that moment, I would feel very traumatized and depressed, and to be honest, I don't really think I would be able to survive. Wow, just wow. I don't even understand why they don't care about other people's feelings. I'm not sure how I can answer your question. And to be honest, it would truly be a miracle if we only had peace in this world. But that's a far-fetched dream, and I think it's impossible for it to happen. So that was our aunt story, right? Yeah, that was our aunt story. You see, that day, the FNL, which was a Burundian rebel movement, came that day and shot and burned only our tribe because of our ethnicity. I was born two months after the Katsumba genocide happened, and while I might not have been there, I've truly witnessed its aftermath throughout my childhood, and it's just as devastating as the genocide itself. It was truly a nightmare. All we wanted was to feel safe. And the question we might ask ourselves is, is genocide real? Is it the truth? And my answer to that question is yes, genocide is real. It has been happening throughout the world with millions of people dying. In the Holocaust, 6 million Jews were killed, according to Haaretz. In the Rwandan genocide in 1994, hundreds and thousands of people were killed because of tribal disputes, according to the Journal of Refugee Studies. And you know what? Whether the reasons are religious, cultural, or tribal differences, none of them justifies genocide. Then what is genocide? You see, Sarah, genocide is an atrocity. It is having this immense hate for a group of people that you're willing to kill them in the most brutal way. Is genocide fear to all concerned? No, it's not. 
when they shot bullets through our family's heads and just decapitated them with no mercy. That is not fair. When they viciously ripped the heart of a mother right in front of her child, that is not fair. For the pain and agony children have suffered, which has left them without the feeling of safety, love from their parents, or a place to call home, for the countless bodies they have cold bloodily engulfed in flames. That is the pure definition of genocide. And that is not fair. So we're just going to sit around, let them kill our tribes without any justice whatsoever? Are you kidding me? I'm really not. I'm being serious. The Congolese government isn't really acknowledging that the Katumba genocide did happen. They have been denying it until date. And this is why I believe that we should come together, not as tribes, states, or groups based on certain identities, but as humans who believe that genocide is inhuman, an atrocity that should never happen. I miss Congo and I want to see it. So can we ever return to Congo if the genocide is still happening? I'm not sure if I can answer your question again, Sarah. Because to be honest, the people over there say we don't belong in their country and they treat us as outsiders and they say that we're Wanyarandans and we should go to Rwanda. But then when we go to Rwanda, they say that we don't belong there, we belong to Burundi. And then when we go to Burundi, they say that we don't belong there, we belong to Congo. So it's just a whole big mess and we're left as refugees with no country to go home or a place to say that we belong. But once they see us over there, they're going to be shocked and say that we belong there and start asking us for money. And so you think once they see us, they're going to ask us for money and that's the reason they're going to um, tell us we belong? Yeah. Sarah, you're very right on that point. People are so selfish that they don't even care who they hurt in the process in order to get what they want. And believe me, our tribe has seen that. It's seen how selfishness, greediness for power, and hatred can commit this tragic and traumatizing event with millions of people dying. So, Solange, you were saying that we don't have a place to call home, but we have Jesus, so we technically do have a place to call home. That's not what I meant. I meant that here on earth, we don't have a place to call home. And you know what, Debra? Like, our aunt, hatred, destroyed our childhood and a dream of having a place to go home. Instead of a dream, we were cursed to live a life as refugees. I don't want to live in a world where mankind is its own enemy and we only cause destruction and devastation in our paths. Martin Luther King Jr. once said that we must learn to live together as brothers or we will perish together as fools. What does that quote mean? That quote means that if we don't learn to love each other as brothers and sisters, then I'm not really sure if we'll ever eliminate the atrocity that is genocide. Wow, just wow. I feel so sorry for the Wanyamrenge that experienced that. And to launch something that I have also noticed is that some Wanyamrenges that have been born here or have lived here have forgotten everything like their religion, their culture, and everything that their parents have left for them. So Solange, what advice do you think we should give to those Banyamrenges? I have one advice to give to those children. Don't forget your religion. I know for sure us Banyamrenge believe in God, Jehovah. He literally brought us out of a life of only misery and devastation and give us a place to live, food to eat each day, and a bed to sleep at night. And to be honest, the Banyamurenge in Congo can only dream of such luxuries, but never get to experience them. It's their dream to have the life that we have right now. So please, don't forget who God is, and don't waste your time on useless things that are never going to help you in life. The second advice I'd like to say would be to respect your parents. Our parents have literally brought us into this world seen us grow up and taught us everything that we know. And so, having the audacity to disrespect our parents, it's just nothing more than stupidity right there. Okay, Sarah, what would our third advice be? 
Our third advice is respect. Respect means treat people the way you want to be treated, and then they'll treat you how they, how you treated them. Okay, everyone. This is the end of our podcast, and we hope that you've learned that selfishness, hatred, and greediness brings nothing more than devastation and destruction to other people. Thank you for listening, and as many would say, ta ta.